Hello and welcome to Tight Lines. No one has done more in the last few years to raise the shark interest of British anglers than Andrew Alsop, who I'm delighted to welcome to the body for the first time. A skipper of whitewater, he's broken new ground in both the size and quantity of sharks captured, as well as boating the first Mako in the UK for over 40 years. We're hearing a lot from Andrew about sharks and the other species he targets so successfully on his charter trips. First up, though, we're we'll getting a float with me and the rest of the hopefuls on the Brighton Diver as we did battle in this year's Brighton Pollock competition. Always a superb event. You can see more of my exploits in Florida's Key West last year. On this occasion, a brilliant day out we had targeting snappers and sharks in the sport fishing mecca. There's something for course anglers too, with specimen hunter Duncan Charman going after the apex predator of the freshwater world, the hungry and hard-fighting pike. Well, it's great to have you here, mate. I'm normally in your cabin. You can be in mine now. Yeah, it's not so rocky. <laughs> no, you're right. It <laughs> could get rocky yeah. a bit, a bit yeah. rocky later on. But, you're, I mean, you're not sharking at the moment. We're more about sharks later. But you're having a fantastic time in the Bristol Channel. Yes, yeah, the sport's been great. I mean, we've had some good cod fishing this year. Yeah. Because of change. We've been up against it for the last two years. So it's nice to see the cod back. Yeah. Um, a couple of, there's been some big fish around, and we've had some, up to just under 30 this year, which has been great. Yeah. But also some, being, some cracking eels. We get some good eel fishing in the winter. Yeah. So a lot of people don't realise that, that some of our best eel sport is actually yeah. midwinter. But you, and you get them over a rough ground. But the thing that's intrigued me is the number and quality of these beasts you've been having, spur oh, dogs. Spur because dogs. I mean, when I was a lad fishing, we used to catch thousands of these. Yeah. Nowhere near that size. I mean, what size is that? That one was just under 20, huh? I think in 198, something like that. But we've, the day before that one, we had another one 19 pounds, loads wow. of 17s and 16s. So they made a massive comeback after commercial, you know, uh, pressure. They come back in absolute they're swarms of them at yeah. the moment. And they're great fish as well, and like tackle, they yeah. fight hard, don't they? Good fish to catch. Yeah, they're great. I mean, people, you know, anglers just like a good bend in the rod. Yeah. So you've got a choice now. You can either go after the, you know, the cod lid. Not a lot of big cod at the moment. There's a lot of cod lids, sort of two to three pounds. Yeah. But if you want something to bend a rod, you've got the option of going after the yeah. spurs. Smashing. Now, Pollock are now turning up in numbers in many areas. And on Tuesday, me and Nigel, by the way, took our places on Paul Dyer's boat for one of my favourite events in the calendar, the Brighton Pollock Competition. Now in its sixth year, it's becoming something of a South Coast institution. No wonder, it's a great day out. It's a bright and pollock competition. Let's get going. Several miles out in the English Channel, we found the wreck first drop of the day. Always exciting. It's quite often the biggest fish come on the first drop, so it's uh, always anxious times. I couldn't let Keith have all the fun. Paul invited me aboard, so I thought it'd be rude not to join in. Coming up on the wreck now. I did have a fish, and I think I've got a fish, and it's only a little fish, probably a pouting. And there's our pouting. I'm in. We've just had a first drift over a submarine. And when this fish took off, it took so much line off the drag, I thought I'd hook the sub. But this is what we're here for. This is a good fish. Here's the leader. There he is. Get in, look at that, like that pink Barbie doll lure. Uh, go on. Yeehaw, oh, he's in the onion bag. Oh dear, I'm happy with that. That would do nicely. First fish of the day. If that's the only one I catch, I'll go home happy.
As I dropped this down, I could feel what I thought was the rig going through the wreckage of the old submarine. And I wound quickly to get it up, and I thought I'd hook the wreck, but I was wrong. It's a fish. There we go. Not as big as Nigel's, but it's a start. There it is, first fish of the day. It's not going to win any prizes, but it will look nice with a bit of panko breadcrumb on it, I promise you that. I've got another one on here. I don't think it's as big as my last one, but... They're all welcome. Fantastic bite. The trick, as Keith will always tell you, is just to keep winding. It's tempted to slow down when you get a bite, but you just keep winding. And it's fish on. Just at the end of the drift as well, which is handy. That was the bell, the hooter, to rear in and we'll go round again. I don't think this one's so big, Jack, but we'll soon see. Well done, Jack. Dad, you got a proper fish this time. <laughs> Two fish now, and that's the lure that's doing the business. Little pink lad, I've nicknamed it Barbie. Alan, one of the lads on board, gave it to me. You can see it's got a nice paddle tail and it's articulated along here. So lovely action, nice pink with a bit of glitter and the fish seem to like it. That's the main thing. This is a good fish. I just tried a bit higher up. We've been catching on 12 or 15 turns. And I just went on to 22 turns for this one. And it was a solid old smack, and it's took some a couple of lots of drag, and it's hanging down there deep. That's a substantial fish. Good man, well done, Jack. That's better. It's a much nicer fish, beautiful looking, lovely condition. Really nice fish, eight or nine pound maybe. <laughs> that last fish stole the lure, so I've dropped down with another worm. This one hasn't got a yellow tail, it's blue all the way down. A little bit of red patterning on the head, and I thought... I was a bit sceptical, actually, cos I thought it was the colour variation that might be working. Obviously, it's the fast wriggling action of the tail. There's a leader. That's a bit bigger. Yeah. Whew. That's the jelly worm. The original one had a bright yellow tail, and I was convinced it was a combination of colours. But this is just red and blue. You can see, and the red will ob obviously become grey down at the depths, unless Pollock see different to how we do. It seems to be working. It's probably the action, really violent action on these curl tails. Lovely. I just changed from pink to a blue and white lure. Tim up the back of the boat's had a few on blue and white, so I thought I'd give it a go. It's not Fulham's colours, but it's done the business. Here we go. Here we go. Blue and white. Coming out this guys, we're gonna have a quick move. We've just come to a new mark, there's a shipwreck that was torpedoed during the last war and it was blown in two and we fished half of it, had a few fish and the other half of it drifted about half a mile away and we're on that now. Lovely. Another one bites the dust to the blue bomber. Blue is the new pink.
done. And the winner is Alan Coombs. Fish, that's 16 pounds, well yeah. done. 16.4, that's a really good fish today, well done. So, Alan Fisher, 16.4, you've won the event. Is it your first win? First win, first win. The only competition I enter. Really, and I know the Lady of the Lake's very successful every year. Every in... year, we've been, to say, third, fourth and fifth, but this year, number one. Number one in the boat number and one. in the angler yeah. as well, yeah. yeah. Well, well done, mate, enjoy your prize. Yeah, I hope you get do. some good tackle from it. I will. And I'll see you next year. And the tackle will be donated to the uh, disabled anglers. Oh, brilliant. Well done. So, because I have more tackle than I ever need. Yeah, well done. Well done, everybody. Actually, over £1,600 was raised for the Brighton lifeboat, the RNLI down at Brighton. And also, thanks to Diver for their support, £875 in prizes there. And, and, and obviously, a fantastic day. Loads of fish. And, and that's in six years, that's gone from having you know, half a dozen boats and 30 people fishing. There's now something like, oh, well, well over 100. Boats come from Portsmouth, Dover, all kind of great at Brighton and going out for the day. Good that's, day. Sounds great, isn't it? Yeah, Especially when they're enjoying it, it makes yeah, a lot of a difference. It was, it, yeah, it, 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 it's such a nice social day as well. Everybody's happy and laughing yeah. and smiling. Which is, uh, do you ever get any pollock out your way? Yeah, not so much in the Bristol Channel. We do get it somewhere. We've got to head west. But when the boat goes down to Milford Haven, uh, we, we do a lot of wrecking trips. We've got yeah. the Irish Sea. There's a lot of pollock up there. But we don't get... They're not, you know, the big fish. You get your, like, a lot of eight to nine pound fish. Yeah. Welcome back. Andrew, all sorts of guests this week. And as one of the top charter boat skippers in the country, it's great to get a different perspective on things. And first of all, what I want to do, Andrew, if you don't mind, just go through those lures that we used on the Pollock Comet. Did you use any of these ever yourself? Yeah, we used them on the Irish Sea when we're oh, yeah. down west, so we used a lot of these when we're wreck fishing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, on great, on 12-pound class rods, sort of 20, 30-pound braids. Fantastic sport. Yeah, it's yeah. brilliant, yeah. 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 As uh, one of the teams said, blue is the colour, so we'll get rid of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, this is Nigel's Barbie lure, and he really yeah. had a lot of hits on this. And he lost one and found another one in somebody else's box. And this is the actual one That's tied, right. and you can see it's a bit, it's a bit uh, scuffed. But yeah, a bit scuffed up on the back. And and my one, I started with the blue and yellow. It's a very big fish on last year's tournament. Right, right at the end, and lost it. Took me into the wreck. So I used the blue and yellow, and and it was munched by a fish. Yeah. So I found this in my box, which is exactly the same size. But it works brilliantly, and the reason why I use these curl tails rather than the shads, there wasn't much wind, so we weren't drifting very far, and I just think you get so much more action. You only have to move these a little bit, and, and they really move in the tide. Yeah, we, we get the same thing. If we got new anglers to, I mean, working these particular heavier lures, yeah. you need to be working them pretty fast, and if you're not... If you don't know what you're doing, it, it, it can be hard work and they don't seem to catch. You give someone a jelly worm, they can virtually leave it stationary. Yeah. And it, it, the tail, like you just said there, in the tide will be enough yeah. to catch on. So it, it, can make, it makes life a little bit easier if you don't really know what yeah. you're doing. But most of your fishing this time of year is done in the Bristol Channel. The water's very coloured normally. But look at the fish you catch. I mean, wow, you said you had cod to 30. Is, is that, that can't be far off. That, that was a win. Yeah, that was just under 30, that fish. That's a lovely looking fish. And to be fair to the angler, he actually put that fish back. Did he? And it's, it's not one of the gut buckets, is it? It's not like no. full of row. It's a really lean fish there. It's more like a Norway. The one you see in Norway, a long, a long fish. Yeah, fantastic looking fish. And uh, I know we had some of these when I was out with you fishing on rough yeah. ground. We didn't get any of this size. That's a, yeah. it's a good size eel for open water, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, on the rough ground, we, we don't know what to expect at the moment. So that's a, the great thing about fishing. Uh, the, the eels, we catch a lot of eels in the winter, which is, which is great in the, in, the, yeah. in the deeper water. So we're not we tagging these and the spur dogs as well. And, and you use a fairly standard rig. I mean, this is, this is your standard panel. And I know you're, you're, you tie all your own rigs, don't you? You don't, like, yeah. you don't mind anglers using their rigs in case oh. they lose them. <laughs> but you prefer them to use yours because, like a lot of the American skippers, you count the fish caught mm. as your fish, don't mm. you? you, know, you can, yeah, somebody catch them on your boat, they're your fish. Yeah. That's, um, this is a big, strong swivel there, ordinary crane swivel, really hard-wearing. 
Yeah. What's his hundred pound mono? No, I'll show you two hundred pounds. And to be honest, a lot of anglers will get quite finicky. Over say, oh, I don't want to use it, but there's no sight involved in our channel. It's dirty water. They're going for scent. It will make no difference. We've got rays on it. It's just easier to mess around with. And if you yeah. do pick up a taupe or something with got teeth, you're going to land it. Chance, this yeah. is why I try and see the anglers rather than lose them. And you use a use a sh short trace. This is not tied to all. This is a short trace, isn't it? You only use yeah. a short one. Yeah, we've got strong tides, so naturally we want the baits hard on the bottom. Mm. We don't want, we don't want the, the trace being miles well, away from the fish, so we want it tight on the bottom, then the fish will find that bait. And the panel works helps that as uh, well? Yeah, it does. You, you can adjust that. That hook can come down, yeah. adjust it to whatever bait you're going to use and you pull down so you can use a variety of size of baits big small and it does the job there you go excellent yeah really good but you know let's be fair people talk about androids they talk about white water they talk about sharks you know oh. doo -doo, doo -doo, yeah. starts, and, and you know i've been out a few times dave lucky lewis he's always always got a few yeah. fish around with dave and, and when you sell people you're out 25, 30 miles off Wales, they go, no, get it. But the, the colour of the water, the blue of the water is sensational. The quality of the fishing is unbelievable. Unbelievable. I mean, look at that. That's, I always hold the thin end, get away from the nasty, bitey bits. But they're quality fish. Yeah, they are. The, the, like you said, the clarity of the water, once you get over 15 miles, you get away from that tr green tinge and you go in the clear water, and that's why the blue shark fishing can be spectacular. It's like a bit of Gulf Stream almost, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, you're in, well, you're actually, you know, we're getting plumes of the Gulf Stream, we're not actually in it, you're getting break-offs yeah. of it, and you know, once you get in the water, cloudy, it's amazing. I, I just want to have a look at, at some of the fish as well. I mean, this is, I was going to say it's a good-sized blue, but then you tell me it's a male, and possibly one of the biggest males ever caught in the UK. Yeah, because, I mean, if we I caught, like, 800-odd sharks last season, a 1,000-odd, the year before, out of those fish, probably a total of blue sharks would be 10% of them would be males, and usually up to about 80 pounds would be a good one. Yeah. But that fish was 188, so that's, you know, that's but amazing. You, you do them all on a weight for length scale, don't yeah, you? Don't, yeah. don't kill them and don't, weigh them, they're no, all... No, no, Lent, we put a tape down the, down the fish, on the girth measurement, we've got a formula, you know, you're going to be 90% here or there, you know, yeah. you're not going to argue over it, but the fish swim away at the end of the day, and that's what you want to see. Now, this is a creature that I've yet to make the acquaintance of. No, that's not the anglers holding it, because I don't recognise them. <laughs> Normally, they're, they're disguised as something else. These are the mask wearers, they're aren't the, they? They're yeah. the loons, yeah. The loons, yeah, the mad crew. The great crew, great crew. You see the tape measure there in, in the background, actually, just down by my finger. But that's a poor beagle, and, and they are... I mean, with the greatest respect to blues, poor beagles are proper sharks, aren't they? Oh, they they're, are. They're, they're biters. Yeah, they're like a tuna, to be honest. They're semi-warm-blooded, and they, they're powerful fish. Yeah. Uh, very similar to your Mako shark, but the poor beagle loves going down deep. Yeah. And in our wars, they'll give you a workout. And yeah. anyone who says they just go round and round the circles, then you need to go out there and fight them in 300 foot of water because they can give you a right old beating. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting for that. I'm looking forward <laughs> to it. I'm, I'm looking forward to it, actually, because I, I don't yeah. mind. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll back myself against the fish. But this is something very special. It's still the, the, the first one for 40, over 40 years. And, and Andy Griffith, I know, who's, who's in the middle of that picture, you probably recognise Julian Lewis-Jones from, from Stella, as well as being a guest on Tight Lines and, and you there. And you, that smile is, is a smile of pride because you were made up with that fish, weren't you? Yeah, it was, because, I mean, I always thought the amount of trips I'm doing, one day I come across the path of a make, or whether I thought we were lucky enough to hold one. Mm. There's a lot, a lot of luck involved with fishing. We're talking about short fin mako. Yeah, short fin mako, yeah. And um, lucky for us... You know, we had three different species that day, which was, t you know, the Andy's got a letter on the IGFA saying yeah. it's, a, it's a rare thing to catch three different yeah. species. You know, dying, they've yeah. ever been registered anyway. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that one was great, £194 and um, a great fish. Yeah. I, I just want to look at the rig as well because, as you, you'll see a bit later on, the rigs we use in the States are very different. But this is your standard rig. Now, this is, we'll call this the rubbing trace. The rubbing leader, right. yes. And you use this long... Yeah. Because you like to get the fish in the boat, make sure they're unhooked and go back safely. Yeah. So you've got this big, very, very strong swivel, a weight to take the rig down, and this, what's, what's the strain of this cable? That, that's about £380.49 okay. strand. Yeah. So that's very, very strong. And the hook bit, now this is really interesting because you use a circle hook. And, and the interesting bit about a circle hook is you see the shape of it, you think nothing can hook it. You, if you, a fish swallows it, you strike, you pull it straight out. But I just want to show you this. If the fish runs away from you, let's see if I can get it, get it that way around, like this. Now, look, if, the, if you, the fish is running away from you, the hook comes up and it turns. See that turn? It turns right into the corner of the jaws. And, and it just... There's, 
there's no chance at all of it coming out, providing you don't strike. Don't strike. You have to do it really smoothly, just wind down. When you feel the fish and the fish is really making ground away from you, then I like to give the rod... Yeah, tweak it. ..a few jerks yeah, just yeah. to get the point in properly, cos it's not... It's fairly sharp, but it's not ultra-sharp. No. They work on the design of the shape of the hook. Mm. A genius invention. Yeah, clever. Use, use them long-lining so the fish mm. can come themselves. And for you, I know... One of your most important things, you said you had 800 odd sharks last year, over a thousand the year before. Conservation, it sounds mm. daft for somebody that's catching fish. You're very, very keen on getting all those fish back alive, aren't you? Yeah, at the end of the day, you know, we've got to bear them on, we are putting hooks in things. But yes, we need the fish to go back because we need our boats being full. The only way mm. they're going to be full if we're catching a fish. Yeah. Fish going back, we've got a chance, you mm. know, for the future. But, you know, if you remember Lou going back in the heyday when everyone was killed, it yeah. did have an effect on them. And it declined like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, just, just while we've got time, let's have a look at this because oh. this is a bit of a tool. Uh, this is right. the chomper. Now, this is the chomper, right? Now, this is. When Andrew fishes for sharks, he uses chum, which is mashed up fish. And old mackerel and fresh mackerel, whatever you catch, goes in a bucket. And this device is used to chomp them. And it works. I'll just show you. It weighs a ton. So the fish are here, and someone's at that end and goes. And that mashes the fish, doesn't it? Almost yeah, into yeah, a pulp. Yeah, yeah. But, and it's bran and your secret mm. oil that. I'm not doing the uh, the shark challenge. I'm not doing the shark oil challenge by the way, which you get yeah. scooped by drinking. No, I'm not doing any of that. Oh yeah. But the important thing uh, for me with this is, is how you actually get the bait in. You say you're, you're convinced that that banging yeah. on the deck of the boat is an attractor to the fish. Yeah, itself. With, with predatory fish, catfish, pike, it doesn't matter. The vibration is very important, and I'm convinced the banging noise as well makes mm. a difference to any sharks. The amount of times that we get fish. When we're ma making chum up. Yeah, amazing. Oh, this is too much to... I've got to say, that's the first time I've, used, first time I've picked that up. Yeah. It's probably going to be the last <laughs> yeah, time I've picked that up as well, because it's, it's, it's really hard work, yeah, isn't it? It is, yeah. Keeps you fit. Welcome back. Before the break, we saw Duncan Charman in pursuit of a pike, the top of the food chain, as far as fresh water is concerned. We'll get back to sea fishing now, and the apex predator, as far as the salty stuff is concerned. The Florida Keys provides amazing shark sport, as well as plenty of other species. As you can see from this day, I had on my boys' trip last year. Just the other side of Key West into the Northwest Channel. This is the main shipping channel that runs out into the Gulf, and there's that deep hole here that's usually got plenty of snappers in it. We're going to drop down little cut baits on jig heads, just a light, just about a, a swan shot weight, I suppose. Then it gets to the bottom, and if it stays there for more than 10 seconds, we'll pull the anchor up and move somewhere else. As I thought, it didn't take 10 seconds. And there's a yellowtail snapper. These are the bread and butter fish of the Keys. You go into any restaurant in the Florida Keys and they'll sell you yellowtail. They're different to the yellowtail, what they call yellowtail in California, which are more like amberjacks. These are a beautiful food fish. They're very spiky, spiny dorsal fin, nasty spines there, and uh, quite nasty teeth too. This one's not big enough. He's going to go back to get bigger. Oh, that's a proper one. Show me what they call snappers. <laughs> they, have, they, have a, they have these fangs up here to the two front teeth, see them, like canines. It's a really nice one. And there's a hit. Two Chris's already hooked up playing sharks. 
and this is their third fish each. There's lots of fish moving off these flats into the channel. What happens is they go onto the flats at the top of the top of the tide, feed there, and as the tide drops, they run into the channels as super highways to go to their next meal. And what we do is intercept them. We hang chum over the back of the boat, which is a, a bit of old bonito or something like chopped up, and use chunks of bonito flesh. You really want to cast the fish you can see because you just drop it in the water. It is absolutely alive with pinfish. And you can put in a chunk of bonito that big and finish up with skin in seconds. It's a nice fish. Blue sharks are blue, lemon sharks are lemon. Yeah, he's very lemon. Beautiful looking fish, you know, he's got fed up now. Yeah. He didn't want to be there anymore. Go on. Bitten oh, no through the wire. Oh, the hook cut. Oh, no, That's good, the hook pulled good, out. Good Brilliant, well done. <laughs> good work, good work. That's the way to do it. Get the hook back at everything. Amazing, this is just coming up the chum trail. You can almost pick which one you want to catch, or at least pick which one you want to hook. Catching them the other bit. What usually happens is they get up on the flat and then swim into the tide, and they just come back up and right around, and I go this side or that side on the flat. They don't fight in the channel. Now, John's hooked up too. Right, are you under him? You can see where Mine's way out. Okay. <laughs> the fish is about 80 yards away on the flat. Just have to keep maximum pressure on all the time. Once they're swimming up current, they're working hard, and when you're pulling them as well, it's double effort. Yes. Captain, well I dare say somebody will say somewhere they've had a better day's fishing than that, but I'd like proof. That was just sensational. I don't know how many, how many sharks we've had between us, except it's a lot. That's just a perfect Key West day. See, if only Milford Haven had the weather, eh? Oh, yes. <laughs> it's got, and you've done a bit of that too, haven't you? Yeah, we, we, we had a day in, uh, well, we've got some nice day shark in, uh, in Florida. It's great, great ways of fishing, yeah. shallow water. Light, lightish light tackle, tackle, yeah, stand yeah, up yeah, gear, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's really good fun. But mm. just, just going back to some of the fish you caught last year, 
I mean, we've, we've got... Um, this is, is, is someone I had the great pleasure to meet. This is, is George. Is George Alexander, I think. George? George, George Woodward. George Woodward, that's it. George Woodward. And uh, he's got mates with Martin Bowler. You can see Martin in the picture, the new Martin Bowler with ears. Probably the first time I've ever seen his ear rolls, I suppose, in, in however many years I've known him. And this was at your presentation evening. Yeah, he, had, he got awarded with his official Welsh record. And uh, it was nice having you, you and Martin there. And George, you know, with his fishy caught, which was that three hundred pound fish, was amazing. Is it seventy four? Yeah, sem I think seventy four. Seventy odd. Seventy four. Yeah. He's in the seventies. And that's a big, big, angry fish to catch yeah, at yeah. that age. He, fair he play, two hour fight. That. Yeah. You know, and be fair to him. I've seen a lot of eighteen to twenty year olds screaming. You know, and they've yeah. had enough, and he's hung on to that one well. The difference between the two kinds of shark fishing there in Key West, we're fishing eight, ten feet of water, probably like you were in Marathon, right. and. The traces are very different. We've got sort of this much, single strand wire, um, so very stiff, so that you've just got, because you lead the fish on, on the, the 60 pound, 70 pound, 100 pound maybe, lead mono leader, then take the hooks out. We take them out over the side of the boat. But because you get the fish on board, and because it's much deeper water, you need these longer leaders. We need the long leader. I mean, like I said, I was in Florida the same, looking at the tackle. Shallow water, most of the sharks stay upright. They're not rolling and twisting, mm. so they don't injure themselves. When we're fishing, it's often 300, maybe 400 foot of water. So a lot of old sharks will go down. As they go down, they corkscrew. When they corkscrew, it takes a line around their body. We saw one of the fish in the film. As we got yeah. it on board, it was wrapped, yeah, yeah? Yeah, yeah, and it will go down. And then the trouble you got, it doesn't matter. People have said to me, oh, yeah, use, I, I would say mono has no place in British fish for, with sh shark fishing. Mm. Now, it's, you can argue as much as you like about it. You've got to think about, yeah, that might indent the skin a bit, but you get your fish in. Mm. But if the shark bites through with heavy mono on, it will drown and it will die because it's still tangled. Yeah. So at least you know you're getting them in with the wire. Because they with the deep water, they just keep rolling and rolling and rolling. So you need double the length of trace to, to the to the size of shark you're hunting. You can feel them roll as well, yeah, and, and it's so distressing because you're trying to, yeah. to get them to stop rolling and pull them harder. But they just keep going, keep going, and then you wind up like almost like a sack of spuds to the top. And then it's difficult for you because they're full of fight when you unwrap them on board. So that long trace is absolutely vital. Yeah, that's why we've got the clip on there as well. Yeah. So as soon as we can get the leader off them, often I'll put a glove onto the short piece, get this leader out of the way, and then I'm just dealing with the short piece Brilliant. of wire then. Excellent. Well, I can't wait to do it again. I think it's June. I'm out looking for those ones with a long pointed nose. They're the ones I want. Time's caught up with us again. It's easy to keep in touch with us, though, via the website, on Twitter or good old email. That's where to send any young angler photos or questions you've got for us, too. Thanks, Andrew. It's been brilliant chatting to you. I've really enjoyed it. Thanks so much. Next Friday, I'll be talking match fishing with Mark Pollard, a quality angler we haven't seen on the show for ages. It would be great to have him back. Join us at 6 o'clock on Sky Sports 4. That's next week's show with guest Mark Pollard, 6pm Sky Sports 4. Of course, we're also available on demand every week in the Sky Sports section of Catch Up. But for now, have a terrific week wherever you're fishing, whatever you're fishing for, tight lines. Thanks, mate. Well done. Good stuff. Get one of those in the fish. Sky Sports Live. On all screens, on the go, and the best bits on demand.